the intrigue. So Dino, Megs, Al, you better deliver, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure to deliver. All right. That's what we're here to do. Here to play all out. Thanks, Jazz. Um, <clears throat> great to see you, my friend, uh, my brother. Beth, uh, welcome as well. So just so you know, I, can, um, I can't see uh, any of the attendees, but I can see your names popping up. I can also see if you wanted to raise a hand uh, at any point, if you um, we're going to have potentially maybe have some space at the end of the call for Q&A. If we do, there's a Q&A function, should be, um, at the bottom of your Zoom window there, where you just press on that Q&A function and just type in your question, and we'll do our very best to, to answer them if we can by the end of it. Uh, but we've really got so much to get through and talk to you about, so... Uh, <laughs> raise a hand for nasco um I, I think that's a hello um all right let's keep going through megs hello hello how are we team good what time is it for you 6 30 right early i've been up an hour I'm, I'm ready okay. to go ready to deliver on the gold jazz. coast <laughs> mm -hmm. 6 30 on the gold coast gold coast it's not coast sunny today but right. it's still so it's not so cold. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right. We're joining us from Australia. Thanks, Megs. Mel, hello from the UK, right? From the UK, yes. Um, <clears throat> hello. Yeah. And um, we've had a little bit of snow today, Megs, even though you've had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> we've had some snow. Had awesome. Some Thanks, snow. Mel. Welcome. Um, Elise, say hello. Evening, all. How are you doing? Good. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. Um, these are all our wonderful panelists, which we'll talk about more as we go through the call. Sean, hello, where Hi. are you from? Where are you calling from? Where's home? Let everyone know. Hi everyone. I'm, I'm in Essex, so um, yeah, down by the coast there. So it's um, yeah, pretty chilly, a bit wet at the moment, but yeah, generally we're okay. So you've good. been out on the paddle board today? Uh, not today. I was back at work <laughs> first day after the holidays, so it was oh, a bit okay. of a shocker for me. Um, so I had to do my workout before I started this morning um, and then done a day's work, just okay. about finished and had dinner and now I'm back here. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, just for those of you who don't know who are joining us, welcome to those who are just joining us now. Um, Sean is always sending us pictures of him on his paddleboard, whether whatever temperature it is in the UK. So it's always good to check in. Uh, Tiff, where are you coming from? Hello. Hey there. I'm in the States, in Wyoming. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome awesome. to the calls. Glad to be here and feeling it's just waves of nervous still, Dino, but I'm going to call that <laughs> excitement. Um, yes, relabeled. <laughs> I'm really yes. glad to, uh, to be in the space as always. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and it's making it sound like I don't know anyone. Where are you calling from? I think it might be this microphone that's making me feel like I'm some sort of a host, some sort of TV host. I'm still not quite used to this it thing. It did sound a little um, bit Cine Black Blind Date. That's it, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, same question to my own father then, Costas Rakitsis, number three. Um, how are you, Pat? Hello. I'm good. I just managed to time the end of my dinner, the last bite, <laughs> as it went at 8.30. So that was, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was good. Awesome. I, I can see, you know, Alex so chilled. I, I love that background, Alex. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, man. <laughs> um, well, look, I think uh, we're pretty much ready to jump in. Um, welcome to all of those that are here with us who we can't see. Um, but we are here, your hosts and your panelists uh, for today. Um, I'm going to just check that I'm letting everyone in. I'll just check there's a chat here where we raise our hand, then we get them. Okay, cool. Um, right. Um, I want to start off, other than welcoming you all, each of you that join us, thank you for taking the time to spend now as maybe like my own father here that's joining us is um, has just finished their dinner or is in the middle of it. I don't mind or wherever you are from calling in the world. Um, I don't mind as long as you're here with us. Thank you for taking the time. I encourage you to, as you've taken the time out to throw yourself in, to really throw yourself in, really engage, really listen, um, ask as many questions as you want at the end. We'll collect them um, and, you know, just engage as much as you can in it because you're here now. So you might as well, right? Um, and we're going to do everything we can to play out, play all out for you, give you as much value as physically possible, humanly possible in the hour and a half that we have together. So with that said, who's this for? I want to be really clear. Um, those of you who are joining us, I want you to know that, uh, you know, for us, this is what we love talking about day in, day out, right? Um, but 
this particular seminar, this particular like value add, if you like, time that we have together is for those who are feeling lost, perhaps. Um, maybe just want to improve their own self-awareness, right? Just want to know, understand who they are at a much deeper level or just understand who they are. Maybe they've lost a sense of who they are and they want to understand who they are um, and who they're meant to be and where they're meant to be headed. Um, you know, those who maybe want to change path but don't know what to do next. Um, it could be for those who maybe feel kind of a sense of anxiety or uncertainty or maybe lacking some motivation as we go into 2021 and, and even beyond. Uh, it's for those who are craving more fulfillment and meaning, whether that's in their personal life or their work life. Um, or it could be maybe you're someone who's like on a path that kind of just feels like a bit of a dead end. Um, or, you know, you're looking for some kind of clarity and direction with 2021 and beyond. Uh, some kind of way to navigate the chaos that's in your life. Uh, you might be building a new business. You want to try a new career. You want to understand your unique skills. What unique skills do I have? And why? What are my unique gifts? Everyone else seems to have that wrapped up. Everyone else seems to know. And I seem to be the one person who doesn't know is often uh, how some people can feel. Maybe you're in some kind of transition. Maybe you're at a crossroads. Uh, maybe you want to uncover the, you know, your true calling in life. Or you want to just, un, you know, you want to understand your, what is your ultimate contribution in your life and how to achieve it. Uh, and I would say based on the literature, based on, you know, some primary psychologists, a prolific psychologists, the gurus and our own experiences, the single most powerful and effective next step for you, if you are one or if you resonate with one or more of those things in that list. The single most powerful and effective next step for you is to step out of playing someone else's game. Step out of playing the game that you might be in right now because it might not be the game that you wanted to play and actually start playing your own game. The one that you designed for yourself. The one that gets the best out of you. The one that's most fulfilling. The one that's most satisfying and meaningful. So to explain that a little bit further, I want to introduce Mr. Alex Eastman. Um, who has spent the last six years being flown around the world, haven't you, brother, to teach others about the topic that he's here to talk about and to teach you about today and share with you all today. Um, a man who doesn't just read like it's going out of fashion or the books or all the books in the world are just going to evaporate, but also he does the work. Um, and if you know the guy, you know the pain that he's been through, you know the agony he's been through, um, it's such a, what you may seem uh, a young or early time in your maturation. Um, the guy's been through a lot. So he's done a lot of the work. He's not talk. He's, he really does walk the walk. So with that said, Al, uh, uh, inspirational brother from another mother, please um, take the floor and share with this wonderful group of people what you've learned and uh, what you believe will be of most value to them in this time that we have together. Thank you, Dino. Thank you for that introduction. Um, <clears throat> yes, I have been uh, in this space for a long time. Just quickly, I'm over in Sydney. It's morning for me here, so welcome. Um, it's been a, a bit of a long night for me. I'm training, a sleep training an eight-month-year-old baby boy, my <laughs> first son. His name's Atlas. He's a very determined young man, and he's been uh, showing that throughout the night tonight. So any of you that have Children may well uh, sympathize with that experience, but it's a blessing for sure. Um, so it's morning for me here. So the sun's just rising, the light's coming in. And I'm feeling very privileged to be in this space and to have this opportunity to share with you today. But um, this is gonna be a conversation today. I'm gonna be doing some framing to begin with, but we have an incredible group of human beings that you see before you, the panelists. Uh, the experts that are here with us in this space, the facilitators that have been um, spending the last year of their lives and beyond for Dino and Megan, um, understanding this craft and, and deepening their understanding around this conversation we're going to have today around values and around vision and mission and, and some of the, what we strongly believe and have lived to experience the most important fundamentals that we can have in our, in our lives. Um, just to, to briefly give you a bit of background, as Dino said, I've been in this space for a number of years now and I actually started working with entrepreneurs um, so fly working um, in seminars workshops often in-person experiences to um, help people to understand the things we're going to be talking about today 
to go through the discoveries of coming into contact with their own, what I call fundamentals, which we're going to speak a bit more on, and then how to integrate those and, and embody them and live them in their lives. And this really came about through my own journey, as I say, of, of living, um, living through my own experience of, of this. And I can honestly say it's been the most profound uh, understanding thing to learn and to live through uh, that I've ever had the opportunity to come into contact with. As Dino said, I have uh, experienced my fair share of chaos. Um, I lost my sister who I was very close with when she was 29 and I was 26, just a year after my father. I uh, lost a footballing career and a business and many other things at the same time and um, had a bit of a baptism of fire. And it was through that journey that I came to understand these teachings and to live these teachings and embody them and then go on to share these teachings with many other individuals who have then gone on to live them. And no more so than some of the individuals you see here before you. And he didn't give himself too much of an introduction, but no more so than the individual in the mid of your, middle of your screen, the chief of ultimate contribution, Mr. Dina Akitsis, who um, came in maybe as one of the first students, or actually Megan was probably one of the first students of this work that I worked alongside. Um, the Dino's continued to take this work out with myself and Megan and, and to deepen it and make it more profound. So with that said, I wanted to take just a little brief moment here um, to, as I said, I've usually done this, this work in person. Um, and over the last year or so with the changes, the global changes, we've been doing more and more work satellite in this way. Excuse me. Right? But what I like to do, if you um, join me in this, is just take a little brief moment to be together, even though we're on the other side of the world, different places, different time zones. Um, I like to take a moment to just drop it. So I'm going to invite everybody just to take a little moment in their chair, just to shake yourselves out a little bit, take a few breaths. And I want us all just to let go of the noise of our experience of the outside world. You know, the, the sleep training that's going on, the kids that are needing this, the job that's calling for us, all of the energy that's kind of outside of us, that's kind of nagging at us in different places. Excuse me, that's my messenger people messaging us in the middle of our, of our webinars, all the distractions. I want us to take a moment to let go of those and just be with our body and be present here together. So I'm just gonna ask you each to just close your eyes for a moment. And as you do, just to draw a breath down, follow that breath down deep down into your body and start to feel yourself connecting in. If you can put your feet on the floor and start to feel the ground beneath your feet. With each breath in, you're calling back all of that energy that's outside of the space that you're in. Calling it back into your body. And with your breath out, you're just releasing. You're just letting it go and letting yourself drop into this present moment, feeling connected to the individuals that are here in this space. The privilege we have to share this time together. and just allowing yourself to arrive here in this room, in this shared space that we get to have here today. <sighs> you need to just laying out a little sound. And every time you breathe out, you feel yourself settling down, feel yourself slowing down. Feel yourself deepening the connection to yourself, to your body. Feel yourself more anchored on the ground, on the floor. Some of that frenetic energy starts to leave and you feel yourself coming back into your energy. Welcome. Excuse my messaging. <laughs> That's the ding. Oh, perfect timing, yeah. It's like the end of a meditation ding, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's the ding, it's the bell to, to get started. I'm just going to quit messenger here so that doesn't do that Great. welcome and i wanted to start by acknowledging you um, there's so many things you could be doing in this moment right now you could be watching tv out distracting yourself in a million different ways there's all kinds of things demanding our attention we live in a very noisy experience of our lives we have all kinds of uh, content and videos and people and calls and television shows and netflix and kids and family members and anxieties 
demanding our attention. And for you to have chosen to share this time and space with us, uh, first of all, I'm extremely grateful for that. Your attention is something that I believe is a gift and it's a gift that we'll be working extremely hard over this next one and a half hours or slightly less than that now to ensure that you get a return on that gift and a gift is received um, for the gift of your attention. Secondly, it tells me about you. It tells me what you're aiming at in your lives and whether you continue further down this pathway, the fact that you're sat here now means that you're asking yourself the right questions. In a time when we've hit a global uh, situation of, of chaos and unknown, uh, many people are kind of just putting blinkers on and kind of just going inward and, and shutting down. The fact that you're here to be a part of this conversation and to learn uh, more about something as profound as this, this work, this individual self-discovery tells me that you're aiming at the right things. And ultimately that is the most important aspect. And I commend you for that. And I uh, encourage you to continue to aim at finding more and more of who you are and how to bring that into life. And with that said, that's really the basis of this conversation that we're here to have today. Underneath all of the conversations we're gonna be sharing about values, about vision, about mission, about navigating through the chaos of the unknown. Ultimately, it's in a container of how do I discover all of the beauty, gifts and truth and power and efficacy of who I am? How do I know that and come into contact with that in a way that is in my body, in my mind, in my being, in my spirit? And then how do I bring that out into the world so that it can contribute, so that I can play my music, so that I can sing my song, so that I can be effective and powerful in my life in a way that feels fulfilling and true to me, that feels authentic and inspiring, so that as we take on the challenges of our life, as the chaos does come along, we know how to respond in a way that empowers us towards a vision that truly inspires us. And having seen um, many, many things in, as Dino said, a relative, relatively short period of time in terms of the length of my life, I'm the co-founder of a, a cancer charity called Victoria's Promise. Um, I'm the founder of a community organization called Toledo, which is a part of, and I'm the co-founder of this organization on the contribution. Um, and I have spent a lot of time in the space of mental health, of physical health and well-being, of entrepreneurial um, spirit of business growth. And ultimately, all of those areas come back to this conversation today. This is the conversation that underlies all of those areas, our business, our vocations, our relationships, our relationship to ourself our health, our well-being, our anxiety. So it's an extraordinarily important conversation to have. So I'm so grateful that you're here to have it with us. So with that said, I just want to set a little bit of framing um, and then I'm going to just break out into a conversation with these extraordinary panelists because although we could uh, listen to me garble on all day, um, it's in the shared experience that the most value is available to us. So we're going to be hearing from all of us and we're going to be having an open conversation um, because that's the most important thing, I believe, is that we are honest with each other, that we're transparent, that we have a place where we feel safe to speak our truths, to speak out our confusions and to get to a place of understanding so that we can find peace in that. And that's a big part of what we're providing here is that safe space. So thanks for being a part of it. So I'm just going to share my uh, screen here. Jump into a little... As uh, Dino said, we are going to try and make some provisions uh, at the end for Q&A. We don't know necessarily how long we're going to run, so do apologise if we don't make it to that. But if questions come up, feel free to, to, to chuck them into the Q&A box and uh, we'll see how we go. So the game of values. Uh, the game of values is the, is the title of this uh, conversation. And uh, so I wanted to speak a little bit about that and what that means. If we were to lay out what constitutes a game, we could say that there is always a vision of what it looks like to win the game. What winning looks like. Any game you play, you have to know what winning looks like to be able to play the game. Then we would have rules that guide us as to how to win the game. Ways to orientate ourselves, a framework of operation that allows us to know how to maneuver through the game towards the vision 
of winning the game. Now, one of the interesting things about, um, about rules, about um, that aspect is something that's all rules is not a game. Imagine if I said to you, okay, let's play a game. It's going to be a game of counting one to 10. Uh, I'll start one, Dino, you go next, two, and then we go around. And it's all rule. It's just all a rule. It's not a game. And uh, if we imagine trying to play a game without any rule, so I said, okay, Dino, let's play a game. You go first. No game. So we see that, this, that a game is a, is a perfect combination of what I would describe as known and unknown or, or rule and framework and spontaneity um, of chaos and order. It's a perfect combination of, of those two elements. Then we would decide how to bring those rules to life as we play the game. How are we gonna embody the game? How are we gonna play the game? Let's take Monopoly as an example. A nice, what do they call it? A nice money hungry family game. <laughs> Most of us are familiar with from growing up. Um, I was always the banker, sticking a little couple of notes. No, actually, I've got honest, my sister is the banker and uh, she was swift fingered, I think, with the notes. But we'll move on from that. <clears throat> so let's just break that example down. So, winning stroke objective. So, what's the vision of Monopoly? The object of the game. What winning looks like? It's to take ownership of all the property and money until everyone else is bankrupt. That's the vision. So now we have a vision. So now we have a target. Now we have something to orientate ourselves towards what winning looks like. Then we have the rules, the instructions of the game. These are the values of the game, the aims of the game, the framework. Roll the dice, try and, try and buy property, try and land on go, you know, try and land on go. The rules of the game, the way to play the game, to move towards the vision the way that you move through the game towards the vision. Then you have the playing of the game, which is the embodying of the rules, which is acting the rules out, bringing those rules to life, bringing them into the, the embodied world. So they're written on paper. We know the objective, we know the vision, what the vision of winning the game looks like. We have a framework of rules that tell us what the container is to move us towards that vision. And then we have to bring that to life by acting out and playing it out. To make our lives analogous to a game is not to suggest in any way that they're trivial, that our lives are trivial. It is because they tap into something fundamental about the structure of being, which is why we love to play them. That's why we play games, that's why we play games as children, which is why we continue to love games as adults is because they're an arena for us to learn the fundamentals of life, the fundamentals of the, the, the structures that we need to build into our bodies and into ourselves so that we can actually operate effectively in our experience in the same way. So the game is, is, a, is, a, is, like a, is like a microcosm of our reality. And every time we have a vision, the same rules apply to achieving that vision as they do to a game. When we see that common to a game and life itself is the phenomena that when you are orientated toward an aim that you feel inspired to move toward, a vision, and you align yourself to that vision by staying at integrity to a framework of rules, of values. And then if you then commit to the game and you have one step in the known, one foot in the known, i.e. you know the rules of the game, so one half of you knows is in the known and you take one step into the unknown, i.e. you have no idea what's going to happen when the game starts. Don't know what, what's going to, uh, what the dice are going to roll if you're playing uh, Monopoly or what's going to come out of the chance or what the other players are going to do. You're taking a step into the unknown. That's where we find ourselves in the place of maximal engagement. Now, what I mean by that is you'll all have had this experience in your life one way or another that, that, where time kind of stops and stands still. It's a creative pursuit. Maybe you're doing something like you're designing something, you're creating something, you're in an engaging conversation or you're playing a game. As I've said here, whether that game be Sudoku, snooker, soccer, solitaire, alone in teams and threes or a pair. 
you've, we've all had that experience of having one foot in the known, one foot in the unknown, and being maximally engaged in what we're doing, in the pursuit of what we're doing. And it's like, you don't think about eating or, or going to the bathroom or anything. You just feel in flow. You're in that place of engagement, true engagement. And that's what games provide us with. And that's what our life provides us with when we orientate ourselves in our lives in the same way we orientate ourselves in a game. It's a creative journey into the unknown in the pursuit of a vision. Now, our lives are made up of micro games, you know, the game of putting my son to sleep, you know, the game of sleep training my son. I've got a vision of him being asleep. I've got the values of certain aspects of the ways that I'm going to be going about that, the aims, rest him down, you know, and certain values in terms of how I want to interact with my son. Those values navigate me in those moments as I'm uh, helping him in that sleep training. And how I live that out is how I embody those aspects. So I've tried to put together just a little visual representation here um, for us to frame us coming into this conversation. So think of this as a sort of a metaphor, a vi visual representation. All of us stand on the precipice of the unknown in every moment. We don't know what the future is going to bring to us. And because of that, because it's just a blank space, it's like a black screen for us to project onto. And what we then do is project often our fears into the unknown because we fear that uh, it goes all the way back into the cir circuitry that we've evolved in of um, coming up against predators that are in the outside of the known territory, outside of the area of the woods, you could say, that we've mapped, or outside of the area around the fire that we sat around. It's the, it's the unknown territory where threat may, uh, may appear. So all of us are standing on the precipice of the unknown. And these dragons that you see on that, they represent the chaos that can come out of the unknown. Now, what I mean by the chaos that can come out of the unknown, it's the things that come out of nowhere that knock us off our feet and send us into a spiral. A family member gets sick or dies. Um, suddenly we lose our jobs. Uh, suddenly we have a, a sudden health issue for ourselves. Suddenly there's a big item that appears out of the unknown that completely breaks down the walls of our home and leaves exposed to threat and anxiety. That is the chaos that we have to contend with as human beings. It's the chaos of the unknown, it's the unpredictable. But what I've learned, what I've seen over the last number of years, time and time again, as I've taken people through this work is that those moments of chaos are actually some of the most important things that can happen to us because it's in those moments of chaos that we find our true gifts, we formulate our true gifts, help us to continue to navigate forward. So how do we move through the unknown to achieve our visions? How do we have a set of structures that no matter what comes at us, no matter what the global pandemics arise or jobs we lose or family members that get sick or friends that betray us or partners that cheat on us, no matter the chaos, how do we have a set of structures that are inside ourselves that we own, that we know, that allow us to orientate and navigate through anything that comes at us to continue to move towards a vision of our life that inspires us all the way to the end of our lives? How do we set up the game of our lives so that we can be maximally engaged all the way through our lives and we can contend with the chaos of existence effectively? This is how. We have to know our values. Our values are the orientating factors. They're the stars in the night sky that help us to navigate through the unknown, to make sure that we're always staying orientated along our path as it moves and changes towards our ultimate vision. As we take on the mission of achieving that vision. It's our values that orientate us through that experience. And it's our diamonds, our gifts, that help us to move through 
that unknown that help us to continue to take on that chaos and to bring about the vision of our life. It's the things that we have, it's the gifts, the diamonds that we get to bring to life, to contribute to life, that we bring through that unknown that continue to help us to, it's like the skills of playing the game. The diamonds are like, okay, you're playing the game. What abilities and gifts and skills do you have to help you to win the game? So you have the values to help you orientate yourself through the game so that you know your direction through the game. They're like the mini aims, in a way. It's like, okay, my aim in Monopoly is to get the houses in Mayfair and to get the, all the train stations. They're the mini aims that make up the vision, which is to bankrupt all of my friends and take all the property. Beautiful game, isn't it, Monopoly? Great way to teach children. But there's something to be said for that. Monopoly is the game that we've been put into and it doesn't align to all of our values, which is why it's so important for us to construct our own game that feels good for us to play towards a vision that feels good for us to win. How many of you played Monopoly and didn't enjoy winning? I did. I felt bad at the end. I didn't enjoy it. Sister was usually throw the board down the stairs and, and like go down and I would kind of be left feeling empty at the end of winning Monopoly. Be fun playing. And then I'd win, it's kind of like this feeling that as I sat on my like high tower of money and all my like conglomeration of property, looking over at my sister with just kind of old Kent Road left, hoping for like a single spin of the thing. It's like, I didn't feel good. It's because I was playing towards a vision of winning a game that I didn't even want to win. Now we've taken that out into our lives. And I've been doing that in my early twenties, mid twenties, I've been playing games of Monopoly as a real estate agent, as, as other things, but games I didn't even want to win. They didn't feel good to play because they, they weren't aligned to my values, to my truth, to who I really am. So I felt anxious, unfulfilled, uninspired, inauthentic, very little peace on the edge of feeling embarrassed all the time and disorientated until I came into contact with these understandings and these principles. And now I live in a, a different game, a game of my own design. I literally cannot wait to play every single day like I'm playing right now. So I'm just gonna take one step back to that. That's a visual representation of the journey that we're all going on. It's a journey through the unknown. We're in the known territory now. We know what's here, what's now, and we're stepping into the unknown. And we know we have to contend with chaos. We need ways of orientating ourselves through that. So we don't just end up spinning around in chaos, in the unknown, looping in our own patterns, looping back and forth and never feeling that direction, that fulfillment, that clarity that helps us to feel expansive and powerful in our lives, not victims of our lives. And the other thing that we need is community. No man is an island. And as we traverse the experience of our lives, as we look to make our own contributions, we can't do it alone. We need to be, we're symbiotic creatures. It's how we've got here over the last hundreds of thousands of years with community, genuine community, not just things that say they're community, but actual community. And what a community is, is a group of individuals that are aligned to a common vision align to common values so that there's synergy between them. So there's genuine support, there's collaboration, there's, um, there's individuals that make you feel bigger and more empowered in your life versus what our experience really is like of community now, which is feeling bad about ourselves because we're kind of all in it for ourselves. We're not really aligned to any values. We've kind of broke community's kind of been broken down as social media and things have, have, have taken over and we've kind of replaced a lot of our genuine connection with kind of a facsimile version of that um, with social media. And we've never been more atomized, polarized, disconnected from each other than we have today. And community is what has brought us here in our lives. We are not solo creatures, not even close to that. And now more than ever, it's vital for us to come back into aligned communities to collaborate with and support us with so that we can rebuild a future and we can all move towards a vision that truly feels expansive and powerful for each and every one of us. 
So we need to come into an understanding of the importance of these two elements. The fundamentals of our values, our vision, our mission, and the importance of an aligned community that is going to help us to achieve those things and to connect with at a deeper level. Because this isolation we're all experiencing is really deleterious, damaging for the human experience, which is why we have a pandemic of anxiety, which is why we have a pandemic of mental health issues and physical health issues, because we're disconnected from the very things that are fundamental to the human experience, the very things we're here to discuss today, a vision of what your life is here to bring and the values that are gonna help you bring that, a mission of how you're gonna bring those things to life and what it looks like to actually embody that game and play that game out. And a community of individuals that wanna play that game with you. I wanna share in that experience with you and help you to win that game. Vital, vital now more than ever. And that's the conversation we're here to have today. Now this conversation around values, vision and mission, I've written an 800 page philosophy of which some of you might have read a few pages of the abridged version. And if I'm honest, that 800 page philosophy is the shortened version. Because your values, your vision, your mission, they touch every single area of your life, regardless of it. Your relationships to yourself, your relationships, your business, your job, your vocations, your experience of your life comes down to these things in so, so many ways. So we are not going to be able to even get close to touching on all the areas that this conversation is profound. Really what we're here to do today is to hold this conversation so that you can see if you feel inspired to take this journey on for yourself. So with that said, I'd like to open this out to have a conversation with the incredible individuals who have taken on this journey and continue to take on this journey so that you can begin to get an understanding of what it actually looks like to live through these discoveries and what it looks like for your life to be in contact with profound truths about who you are. It might be worth just taking a brief moment before I do that to just lay a, a little context as to how our values are formed. What do you think, Dino? How are we doing for time? Does that sound like a good idea? Um, yeah, yeah, we've got um, probably about 50 minutes left, so we're probably just about ready to start the conversation. But if you've got something you want to drop in just before we have that conversation, yeah, go for it. Really quickly, this is going to be a real high-level version of this. When we're born in our lives, we are just nature, potential nature, unformed. We have to be cultivated into the world so that we can align with our society. Sorry, that was me, dude. Don't worry. Ah, so that we can align with our... I like looking at you guys. Sorry, Dino just took, took my uh, camera. I thought I'd lost everyone for a moment. Everything <laughs> went back. Um, so that we can... Uh, let me start again. When we come into the world, we are sort of unformed nature. And the first thing that happens is we imbibe the values of our surroundings, of our environment. So the values of our culture that we're in. And that comes first from the, the family unit, our peers, our father, our, our school teachers, our society, our media, um, our preachers, our religion. They impose values down on us. You can think of a tree that's growing up out of the soil that gets a, a, a mesh put around it. So that as it grows, it's kind of put in this mesh so that it can fit in with the rest of the garden. It can grow into the shape of the society that it's there for. So as we grow, we, 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 we have all these values put onto us and we grow into these values as we start to live our lives and we, we try and live into these values, the values of our culture. Then what happens is as we actually live our lives, we have our own experience. And we feel our own experience of what is true to us and what is valuable to us. And it comes, there comes to a certain point where what is true to us and what we feel is our values and what we feel is important pushes up against some of the things or many of the things that have been imposed upon us. And we start to feel this resistance in ourselves. We start to feel this disharmony in ourselves. Take a little moment to think about your internal experience. Although we're one person, isn't it interesting that we can feel a conflict inside of ourselves? We feel an unrest inside of ourselves. 
we feel pulled in different directions. We feel like we're supposed to be something. We're expected to be something. And that sometimes feels different than who we feel we want to be or who we feel we can be on the inside. We feel a yearning, we feel a potentiality. We feel like we could be more, like we have more to bring, like we're unseen in a way. And much of that is because we're stuck behind the values that have been opposed, imposed upon us. And we're kind of half living through those values, sort of half living through our own. What the journey that we have taken the individuals through that we're about to discuss and many, many others over the years, is a journey of coming in to an understanding of what your true values are so that you can break out of the, of the mesh, of the, of the bind, if you will, that you've been put in as you've grown with the values that you've been enculturated with. You can break free of that bind. You can rescuing the values that you're given of the past that you do feel that like you align with, letting go of the ones that don't serve you and opening out like a, like a fully maturated tree into your truth to, to flourish into the being that you're here to be, the unique human being, the one of a kind individual that you're here to be. And that's the process of individuation. That's the process of self-realization, of coming into your truth and making your contribution, your unique, powerful, beautiful contribution, the one that feels so fulfilling and inspiring to you. So thanks guys for giving me that little bit of extra time. Dino, if you could bring faces back to me, that'd be awesome. And uh, we're gonna step into this conversation uh, that we have with the guys here. No worries. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> wait a second. All I've done is just taken the, uh, the presenting off so that we could see your face a bit bigger, my friend, just cause I knew you were gonna go into something there and I wanted to see you bigger. So that's no what I've done. I, ju I just made you bigger. Right. No problem. Can back you see everyone else? Okay. This okay. is what I mean, guys. Community that makes you bigger. The raises you get. <laughs> <laughs> You're already seeing Always stuff. here to do that. Always here <laughs> to do that for you, my friend. Thank you. Dino, I'm going to start with you, my friend, um, here. Um, we're coming into to 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you could speak on this topic for a very, very long time, but just for you yep. personally. Why is it important that you have your values? How, are you, how is knowing your discovery of your values, your vision, your mission, how is that going to support you through the next year? And why is it important that you have those things? Well, first of all, thank you for that framing, by the way. Um, really powerful, so thank you. Um, so, God, so many different ways I could answer this one, this one question, but I think um, I, I'll take you back to just a moment in time last year where my wife and I, um, as many of us do, have trials and tribulations during our relationship, and especially with lockdown and having a toddler during lockdown was, <laughs> yeah, um, was, uh, was challenging and puts two people in a small confined space in a very tense environment. Um, and one time uh, we managed to get out. I don't know why with the lockdown, I don't know how we managed to get out, but would have been in between the lockdowns. And I said, look, in this rare time that we have, I just want to know, you know, I talk about values, you know, I talk about vision and mission. It's just kind of, it's my life now. It's what I lead. Um, what do you think mine are? And it's so strange that we have never actually sat down and talked about them, which is, is crazy. But, um, and we've been married almost four years in May. And so I said, you know, what do you think they are? And we went through them. And I've got to tell you, coming into that conversation, I felt very disconnected, very, very disconnected. Like, I don't know about you guys, but if I get into a conflict or something, I tend to shut down and I disconnect from you. If you don't see me or feel me in a conversation, that means I've disconnected and I'm off and I just don't want the conflict. And I don't want to, I don't want to connect with you because I don't want to, yeah, it's just, so I shut down and we both did the same. So we're then two very separate souls living in one house, which is very unlike us really. So we weren't in a particularly great place going into that conversation. So I went into that conversation. I said, what do you think my values are? And she went through the list of values and, um, she actually surprised me in every single one that she got almost every single one of them. And I was like, wow, you are listening. You are, not only are you listening, you understand me. And one of my values is understanding. So to feel understood and to be understood was massive. So what I realized more than ever was I was using my values, my vision, my mission, all those fundamentals to help guide my career, to help guide a lot of my life. Um, and I realized how powerful they are in relationships as well. And coming out of that conversation, we talked about her values and we realized actually how many values we have in common. 
uh, almost all of them. And that brings us back down to the fundamentals of why we're together in the, f- in the first place, right? Like why are we even together in the first place? It's because we, we join on these fundamental understandings and parts of our essence and part of our beings and all the stuff that comes on top. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. All the, all the bits that take over our life and sometimes our conversations are all up the top here. And the one thing that remains is that, is that foundational core. So the difference since that one conversation and since the continuing um, commitment to see each other at that level, because that's where we have the common ground and that's actually who we are. We're not when we're triggered. We're not that person. I mean, that is part of us, of course, but it's not who we want to be in that moment, right? Um, when we lash out, when we um, you know, don't understand, when we shut down. So for me, the power of my values last year was massive in bringing my relationship close to with my wife and how I deal with my kids now too, and how I deal with the tension that that can bring and the frustration that that can bring for any parent who knows. Um, and leaning into my values is one of those ways of, of bringing me back to my core, bringing me balanced, bringing me grounded um, into the things that are most important to me. Those guiding stars, as you talk about, that are going to bring me closer towards my vision. So taking myself into 2021, that's what I want to do more of. I want to stay more aligned to those values so I can stay closer to those who I love the most, even though I'm furthest away from them physically than I've ever been um, for a lot of um, people outside my family, uh, as in my wife and kids. So I really want to take that in for 2021 um, because I already do it for my day job, right? I'm blessed that I get to live my values, my vision and my mission as, as part of my job, um, as my day, as my career. Uh, and that took about four or five years to, to make that shift right um to, to change life but 2021 for me is about relationships and connections and i know the best way to do that is to lean heavily into my values um so i hope yeah. that answers it and sorry i took up some time on no no it's great mate thank you and do you know um thank you for that and do you know i was thinking as you were saying that and you shared that you were inspired to hear that Haley had been listening well i think there's also another um, way of looking at it is I'd say haley has been witnessing me because mm-hmm. you've been embodying your values. You've been living them out every day for mm-hmm. the last number of years. They've been in your experience, mm-hmm. the evidence and how you've acted, how you've responded to life, how you've shown right. up, what you've aimed at, what you've brought around. You are evidence right. of your values. And haley has been witness with that. So Very it's true. been ingrained in, in her experience. That's a, a beautiful reflection, my friend. Absolutely Thanks right. For sharing that. Apt reflection and, for me um, too. Thank you. And uh, one of the things that that brings about is uh, the fact that our character is defined by our values, is reflected Mm -hmm. by our values, Mm -hmm. which is really profound to think about. If you think about, imagine you were playing Monopoly as your life every day for the rest of your life. That was the game you were playing. So then you had to orientate yourself and your character towards being someone who could win that game. Who do you have to become? to win the game of Monopoly every day, where your goal is just to crush all of your opponents and take all the property and all the money. Who do you become in that? That's the bit that we often don't see when we take on a job or we we work for someone else's game, when we're playing someone else's game. What we don't see is that we become a character of that game to be able to play it, to be effective in it, because we have to have the same aims and the aims define the action because we embody the the game and we behave in accordance. So one of the things that was most profound for me in this understanding is seeing how it's redefined my character to go from playing someone else's game, being ego driven basically, and thinking that I was living into the values of a society that told me that I needed to have a fast car and a good look and a, a beautiful girlfriend, lots of beautiful girlfriends and a six pack and all the, all these things, right? They're the values I lived into. And I played that game. I played that game to win and I won that game. And I felt the same as I did at the end of Monopoly when the board got thrown down, empty, unfulfilled, didn't like who I'd become. Coming into contact with my values, my vision, my mission, and constructing my own game to play every single day for the rest of my life with the vision that will carry me through to the end has helped me bring myself to life so that I feel true in my character. I don't have to remember anything or pretend anything or pretend to be someone at work and someone else at home and someone else with my friends at the football, just one individual. 
centered in who I am, thanks to this work and this discovery. And that's what Haley will be witnessing in your character is you right. stepping into the truth of yourself and your values. Yeah, Haley, so Haley's my wife, by the way, for everyone who knows. Haley's my wife. <laughs> some random Haley. But yeah, who you are screams so loudly, I can barely hear what you're saying. It's a wonderful phrase. That, and and I've, I've totally hear what you're saying. I think it's a great validation that finally I've aligned to my own values and that I'm expressing who I actually want to be. And therefore I'm being seen for that. Not always been the case. So um, yeah, I hear you. You speak, uh, who you are speaks so loudly, I can barely hear what you're saying. But um, Absolutely. that's easier. Said um, as a good friend of mine, Mr. John Jackson would say, it, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the music's matching the lyrics. Do you know what I mean? When when you're aligned with your values, the music matches the lyrics. When you're out of integrity with your values, you're playing music and singing different lyrics and you're incongruent and it's noise. And then we experience noise in our life, noise in our experience, disharmony in our relationships and our friendships. Our businesses don't quite go the way we wanted to. It's frustration, anxiety, noise, the white noise of disharmony. It's out of integrity. But until we know what we're out of integrity with, we're just spinning in the dark. It's very difficult. And with that said, I want to come on to you, Dr. Jazz, my friend. Great to see you. Um, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for the way you've committed to uh, this, this work since you've come along. I'd like to know from you, because again, what I'd like to do today is to bring this into life. Take this from concept to reality. Uh, for everyone that's had the opportunity to be with us today. So I'd just like to understand from your perspective, what does it look like for you going from not knowing these things and how your life was to knowing these things? And how has that changed your experience of yourself and your life? Excellent question, my friend. And thank you so much for sharing today. Thank you to everyone who's here today. So I am not going to show you this at all, guys. I am going to share my personal story of chaos because everybody in this call has shared their story of chaos. And it's really humbling. Some of you will know this story and some will not. Um, I studied my whole life to be a doctor. That was it. That was the end game. If you're a brown, Asian, Punjabi person, that is the pinnacle of life. You know, so at 23, I thought I was sitting on top of a hill, fulfilled. You know, I'd reached enlightenment and attainment. I was like, my learning days were over. And quickly, I started to become emotionally fatigued. So although I became good as a doctor, I became very efficient, I could get things done. I was losing the connection with my patients. And honestly, there's a couple of doctors on this call today. If you, didn't, you don't have the empathy and the connection, the rapport, you should not be in the job. And unbeknown to me, that's probably when the chaos was starting and the burnout was starting. So at 25, I started to sort of delve into personal development. And I came across a lot of people that you guys have come across, Tony Robbins, things like that. And I started reading a lot and becoming obsessed on going courses and going to seminars. And again, it was a lot of information but honestly, what I really wanted to understand in the words of Bruce Lee, who you know, I follow a lot, was how to truly express yourself. What is the way to manifest that true authentic being? And again, I was just going doing a lot of things. And a lot of my friends on this call will know, you know, apart from being a doctor, I had multiple businesses that I was doing speaking. I was running around and I was just getting tired in the hope to fulfill myself. And there was still this void. It still wasn't being felt. You know, I had a medical teaching company, I had a property company, I had a facial sex brand, I was doing public speaking, I was running coaching seminars and being a doctor, and just in the hope again to find that true authentic self. And the man in the middle of your screen, Dino, you know, he is the Morpheus in my life and he truly did find me. And um, I went through a very, very dark period in my life. And again, I won't sugarcoat to you, I was a broken man. And the anxiety was so high. When I look back at this, and Dino and I recently, I look back at my old uh, WhatsApp messages with him. And, you know, at some points, I wasn't able to eat. I was having one banana a day, one cup of coffee. I was having diarrhea. I was scared to go to work. I was scared to open my emails. The anxiety was so high. I was so lost. I really, really didn't know uh, where to go. And having done the work, informally first of Dino, and I actually met Dino because my wife actually went through this process first, and I witnessed that word you said there, I witnessed the transformation that she had. She was lost, and by the end of it, she became an absolute beast. She's a fantastic, amazing woman, and I saw this. I said, you know what? There might be something to this Dino guy, this Greek dude, this guy that looks like Jesus, All right? And I may need to speak to him, and when we started to work together, and I started to do the work with my mentor, who's Megs, and to thank you, Megs, for taking me to that journey um, as a broken man, and to uncover and to articulate 
powerfully my true values, you know, my clarity and focus in life, my alignment, my calling, my ultimate contribution. For me, it was the journey of the, the phoenix from the ashes. I had actually left medicine uh, and just before lockdown, that was when I had that broken period and I got COVID. I isolated, uh, I did the work. And when COVID came and there was a call to action, I started working again. And having been this guy who's emotionally burnt out, had empathy fatigue as a doctor, I now enjoy my medicine more than I ever had in the last 10 years because my calling is aligned, my values are aligned. And two things that happened during COVID, uh, which I'll share with you, that are a testament to me uh, expressing my values so that other people can see it. Uh, the doctors in this call will know this person. There was a nurse uh, working on Ward 22. And during the end of lockdown one, she gave me a card. And in that card, she said, lockdown, COVID, COVID was supposed to be hard. This was supposed to be the hardest thing for the NHS, but it wasn't because you were here. Thank you for being a good person. And that for me was the pinnacle of lockdown one. That expression of not asking somebody, but then feeling it, feeling the vibration. And another fellow colleague only a few weeks ago, Sidra, she's not on this call, unfortunately, because she's working. Um, but she said to me, I was, you know, I was sitting at the computer and I was doing something with her, for a patient. And she just looked at me and she said, you know what? You love what you do. And she's like, I can see it. She even gave me the compliment of being a bit like Jay Shetty. And I was like, yep. And um, for me, this has been the journey out of the chaos. This has been the journey to bring clarity and focus to my life. And the word, and I use the word community, Al, you know, I love the word tribe. These are my people. This is my tribe. This is the path of self-realization. And honestly, all my life has been asking, I've been asking myself the question, who am I and how do I step into that and live that authentically every single day? And now with my values articulated each day, as I'll said, there will be chaos. Inevitably there is chaos, but the arc, that's what Al talks about, the arc that will navigate the storm, the inevitable chaos that will come, I now have a, a framework to lean on. I can now sit into that. Uh, and truly this is just the start of the journey for me. Um, so I cannot thank you um, enough guys, Al, Dino, you know, Megs, all the other facilitators on the call, um, because I really, really found uh, my people and my calling. Thank you so much. Beautiful, my friend. Thank you so much for that profound, vulnerable, courageous, uh, insightful uh, share, uh, my friend. It's been extraordinary to see you on this journey and to witness all of the things that you just shared there and continue to watch you inspire others in this space. So thank you for being here and bringing all of your uh, diamonds gifts uh, into mm. this work because you and I That's both right. know how important it is having worked uh, in the space of health in many different ways we know how profound this work is so I'm very grateful to have you with us on this journey my friend Tiffany how are you doing my darling great to see you good to see you too Alex my internet uh, connection is pretty like uh, in and out okay <laughs> Well, if it gets um, if it gets to if it gets more out than in, we'll just uh, we'll move you on. Um, so don't be offended. Um, nice to have you you with us anyway. But I will ask you a question. We'll see how we go. Um, a slightly different question for you, Tiff. Um, you're an extraordinary human being. I've had the opportunity to get to know that over uh, quite a little while now, and you're the kind of person that I think could do anything, literally anything. I, I mean, you've probably one of your struggles has probably been choosing out of all the things that you could bring yourself to, what that's going to be and, and what you're going to commit yourself to because you have a very broad range of interests. You're very uh, intelligent, heart-centered and effective and powerful in, in what you do in your life. So the question I have for you is why have you decided to commit yourself to being a facilitator to bring this work into the world uh, of all the things that you could be doing? Uh, with your life? Why is it that you're here trying to bring this work through? And she's more out than in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Good question though. <laughs> the suspense. Okay, yeah. so we're going to park that. I don't know if you heard that question, Tiff, but you know, we'll park. Are you back? I, I did. I don't know, am I? <laughs> Well, I tell you what, Tiff, why no, don't you switch the camera off as much as we love seeing you. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. Switch your camera off and we'll see if we can, we can hear from you. Why don't we try that? Does that help? 
we can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, let's try that. So um, what I was saying was that uh, why I feel so called to be here is because I know the the impact that this work has had on my life in going through the process myself. Um, you know, I was right before I, I went through this process, I had come out of a really bad relationship um, and I felt like a shadow of myself. Um, I was beginning to, you know, climb out of that uh, and, and determined to get to know who I really am, to be really connected with that because I knew that there was a lack of integrity that was happening, uh, the disharmony <laughs> in who I really was and who I was showing up as in the world. And so I, yeah, I, I went through the process of getting my values and, and my mission and my vision. And, and for so long, I was so much like what you were describing earlier. I felt like there was more for me in life that's a, that is a feeling that is so familiar to me and i felt like i was searching and searching and searching and searching and trying to fill the hole trying to find what is more i don't know i don't know how to make this feeling go away um and since since going through the process and and receiving my mission vision and values i really felt like um i understood myself in a way that I had never understood myself before. Um, I really could see through somebody else reflecting to me that my life, my whole life has had meaning. And that, um, and, and that there were things that I'm like kind of an expert in that I, you know, they're just things that I think that we take for granted. And, and there, it, there are things in my life, though, that that I've been kind of dealing with my whole life. So I have a lot of experience um, around that. So, so to see all of that just helped me to understand who I was in a way that I never been able to do before. And it really helped me to put words, um, put some kind of context uh, and make that feeling of more visible so that I, I knew kind of how to, how to move forward in a way that, um, yeah, that satisfied that. And, and I choose to do this work. I choose to be here because I want that more for, I want that for everybody else too more than anything else. I want, I want people to not have to live their life with that feeling that there's more for them and not knowing what it is or how to find it. Beautifully said, Tiff. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for working with us. And um, even without your camera on, the beauty of your uh, essence came through in your articulation. So thank you so much, Tiff, for uh, sharing with us. And I'm glad we managed to get you in. Um, one way or another. <laughs> so thank you so Thanks, much Alex. For, you for sharing. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for committing to help us to bring this, this work to as many human beings as we possibly can. Costas, how are you doing, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> great to see, great to see you here. Um, my yeah. question to you is, is short. Um, I would just like to know what's there now when I ask you the question is, what is this meant for you in your life? to come into contact with your values and your vision and your mission? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an easy one to answer. A very easy one to answer. Um, in your introduction, you mentioned something like <clears throat> playing someone else's game. And when you're in the corporate world, that is exactly what you do. Give yourself not, that's exactly what you do. And then another thing somebody said, and I've, it might have been you, Dina, is who do you become? Or was it, was it, um, no, anyway, whoever it was, take credit for it, because that, that resonates. 
who do you actually become? Because what happens is, when you play somebody else's game, <clears throat> assuming you're in the right game, because you could be in the, in the wrong game to begin with, when you play someone else's game, you become somebody else, not yourself. And when you have family and responsibilities, you just talk along and you don't take time to consider what is happening to you. And also what uh, John said about, you know, like being Asian, I'm Greek, and it, it's very much the same. The enculturation that takes place is immense. Sorry, PBT. It is it's immense. And to break out of that enculturation in our cultures is even more difficult. Mm. So after my wife passed away five and a half years ago, and I was going to be six years soon, I was kind of lost. And then I engaged a lot more with my sons the way I wanted to. And uh, I found out what Dina was doing. And in the way that I gave Dino life, he has given me my life back by actually introducing me to UCU and the work that he's doing. And I said to him, you were meant to be on this planet to do this work. That is what you're meant to do, because this is your value. This is what you were born with, those values, and you are now putting them in practice with your own father. And I've, I'll tell you what, I've left the corporate world. I'm grateful for what it gave me, but it took a lot as well. Um, and I came to UCU finding, and, and I went through the program, I discovered my values, again and again we had conversations, um, and I'm, not that I'm breaking out of my enculturation because it's a little bit late for me, but I'm still doing it because I have taken the opportunity to read like a man possessed, and read and read and read. And that is making me feel free to do what it is I want to do. And what I want to do is I want to help other people to break that universal disharmony and become a more harmonious whole. One person at a time within my community. I don't want to go, you know, conquer the world or anything. But for the people around me, for this beautiful tribe of people that we have here, that is what I want to do. So that is what this you, you, my friend, and my son have done for me. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Costas. Um, I've been caught out. <laughs> I uh, I probably cry maybe three times a year. <laughs> do you know be able to attest to that? So I'm very surprised <laughs> about what's just happened. But when you said about you giving life to Dino and him giving you that life back, um, it just resonated with me very deeply. My, I took my mum through this process. She, um, my mum lost her husband, her daughter, her brother and her mother in the space of four years. And I know that she feels the same way as you do. And um, that's really beautiful, my friend. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, even though it's caught me out in a way that I was definitely not expecting. Um, it's just so beautiful. It's just so fluid beautiful. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Custis, for sharing that. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> let me just recollect myself a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Sean, we're going to come on to you, my friend. Um, in the continued attempt to take these concepts and, and bring them to life so that they can 
the beautiful human beings that are here with us now can start to think about what it might look like for them. I would just like to hear if you've got any examples of just recent examples of your values showing up in your life and, and how they've actually been in your tangible experience. Um, yep. Yeah, um, thanks for everyone's share so far. It's been really, um, really good stuff. I've really enjoyed it. Um, for, for me, probably um, an example, um, I went through this process um, a couple of years ago now, and um, I've got a, a, a day job that I do, and this is something that I've been doing, um, you know, in my spare time for 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 a while now. And um, it was, I think, I just want to touch on something. The, the, the great thing for me was that I was always looking outside, thinking I had to get certain things, a bit like what people have touched on, but I, having to get this, that whether well, it's a house or an amount of money or something, I was looking for these things outside, and. And like you say, um, it's never really gave me what I wanted, ne never really made me feel fulfilled. I was always thinking that there was there was something else. So so for me to, to find out when I got a couple of years ago, when I got that, um, found out my values and my vision, when I worked that through, to find out that that was actually all inside of me already. And I just needed to declutter, sort it out, find it and arrange it. and that I was always thinking there was something outside that I was going to have to do. Someone was going to tell me a formula and then I'm going to work something out. Like I'll try and work everything out. Whereas it was such an organic thing, um, that process where you, it just gets you and, it, and, it, and we are all total individuals. So this is, it, it's, and it literally, you look inside yourself, you find out what's right for you and it's not the same path. They're all different, but you find your one what's important to you and 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 it was only when i start when i realized i could look inside and then and as i say i was later in life doing this so i spent a lot of years doing something else so i know exactly what it's like that way but to suddenly look inside find out what it is that really makes me tick and really is the right thing for me my values the things i'm i'm good at the things that i really want and then now putting them into my life in like we say like yes I've got an ultimate goal but just putting them into my life as a way of being I've now I do feel that fulfillment I'm I've, I'm happy I'm content I know I'm in the right place I'm no, I'm doing the right thing because I'm doing those things that ultimately make me happy instead of just going to get something I was always going to get something and that was my um you know, and don't get me wrong, I, I had happiness along the way and I had a, a, a ball, et cetera, et cetera, but I didn't get that total fulfillment. Whereas what I've found since I've had them on board is that I do get that total fulfillment. So now in my life, even though I'm not quite, you know, and I would love to do, which is why I'm doing this now, is to, to, to do it more, to give that to other people. I'd like to give it to people as early as possible because finding out at 53, you know, oh, you know, if you just do this, you know, you'll feel way much better. It's a bit like that thing about success. Is it an amount of money? Or no, success is how happy you are. What's your level of happiness? Because it, that's got nothing to do with money. If you are absolutely happy, totally content, totally fine, you've got it sorted. Totally successful. You could be in a hut. You could be nowhere. None of that would matter. Do you know what I mean? And I feel as though I've, as I say, I've had a great time. Yeah, but I feel as though I would like to let people have that earlier of that thing. It's all inside you. Just look, take a look, take a stock check. We can find it, we'll get it out there and then move forward in that way. And you'll feel just so much more right and aligned as you move forward. I don't know if that's answered your question now, but. Oh, it's more than answered my question, my friend. It's more than answered my question. Thank you so much, Sean. Beautifully said, as always. Thank you so much, my friend share it uh, okay we, we're, we're coming to towards the close here but <laughs> i'd love to hear from you mel um i know you're currently um just coming out of the back of a little bit of a allergy and currently uh without smell and taste but you aren't without your values which is going to guide you through this time anyway a slightly different question for you mel maybe careful maybe not i just want to ask you what's on your heart right now in this moment to share with the individuals that are here on this call Okay. Um, thanks, Al. 
And um, Costas always gets me like that as well when you were crying earlier, you bugger. Um, what's on my heart? I mean, listening to Sean as well um, and, and Dr. Jazz, obviously, I'm glad I didn't have to follow Dr. Jazz. He's a tough act to follow. But um, having, doing, done, having done this work, and I've been thinking about all sorts of things while I've been listening to everybody. And ever since I was a young girl, really, I've always, one of my um, mantras, if you like, or mottos is everybody deserves to be heard. And like every one of you has sort of mentioned that in some way, and especially Dina about being understood. And I think so many, and I, I was actually listening to a podcast earlier with Jay Shetty, funnily enough, and Kelly Rowland. And uh, she was talking about the same thing about being understood and, and being listened to. And it's so bloody important for everybody because if, you, if you're not understood, if you don't feel heard, then you can't be who you, you can't step into who you are. And if you can't step into who you are, you can't realize who you are and what your core values are. Going through this process myself, you know, I, I've always had this battle of, um, I was always in the corporate world, but I was a, a bit of a hippie, spiritual hippie. And I always felt like I was in the spiritual closet for a long, long time. And I didn't feel like the two could work together. And that came along a few years ago. And I finally had the courage to, to put the toe out and say, actually, I am a bit of a hippie, I'm a bit spiritual. And when I started to do that, and that was really after losing my dad um, in my thirties, that was when I really started to come into my own. And, and, and it's funny, because one of my core values is responsibility. And that's something I've taken very seriously from a, from a very young age. But also that was, stopping me living a true authentic life because the responsibility of everything was keeping me in a in a life that I wasn't happy in which was the corporate life so it's it's a, a fait accompli I don't know if that's the right phrase or not but um I just made that up anyway so and beautiful I've, it's <laughs> that poetry to me. so um so yeah so I think understanding what your core values are and being able to then translate that into what your vision looks like for the world and what your purpose is, and then realizing how you can achieve that through your mission. It's so bloody powerful because all of a sudden this thing that's so out of reach and you can't quite understand what it is, it, it's like you've painted a picture in front of you and you're like, ah, well, Eddie Al, that's what I've been looking for. That's who I am. And that is the power of, of what we do. And that's the power of what we've given to other people. And to be part of that um, is just incredible. And, you know, anybody that's listening on this call who might be feeling that way, you know, I hope that everybody share has inspired you in some way. I'm sure it has, because it's inspired me. And I know all these guys here. Um, and I've heard some of this stuff already, but it's still inspirational. Um, so I think that's what's on my heart, if that, if that answers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So beautiful, Megs. Uh, Megs, oh, sorry, I was just <laughs> looking at Megs thinking I haven't had an opportunity to speak to Megs and Mel. Um, so beautiful, Mel. Thank you so much for that share. Um, thank you for your courage for always, always sharing so vulnerably, powerfully. I see how courageous you've been in your own life in the pursuit of this. And what I loved in that moment is when you shared about when you came, when you were confronted by the discovery of your fundamentals, your vision, your values, your mission, your diamonds, your, your expression is, ah, oh, that's what I've been looking for. Now, Prue, my partner, she raised to me uh, last year the power of the emotion of relief. It's something I've not thought about before. It's like relief is an extremely powerful emotion. It's something we should aim at and look for and very much pay attention to when we find it, when we experience it, because it's profound. Relief is a profound experience. And what I sensed in you in that moment is, ah, oh, relief. Yeah. And that relief is space, isn't it? It's like, and that, I felt that relief. I felt that relief in that moment. And I felt that relief so many times when I've done this discovery work with people. And um, Meg, so I'm going to come to you and I'm going to ask you to keep this in under a minute if you can. But I just want to speak to you around that and I'm just because of time. And I'm sorry, you've got so much to say. Megs could talk for 10 hours very beautifully about <laughs> So I do apologize. But Megs, just 
speaking into that. No one on this call, I would, I would dare to say, including myself, in fact, I will say, no one on this call has delivered more discoveries than you. What would you say is the common experience when someone comes face to face with their discovery? They see themselves. They really see themselves. And I can't tell you how fulfilling that is for me. I've been through a lot in the last two years, some of the, the most chaotic, turbulent times. Uh, and every time I do one of these calls, I feel full. Like I just get pulled out of that chaos and into this work and just get fulfilled out of seeing that in somebody else. So they see themselves and they feel heard. And some people have never had somebody sit and give them two hours to just talk about themselves and, and listen and feel heard, like everyone said. Uh, and I guys think that's such a gift that I'm blessed to give for sure. But yeah, I would say that's the common reaction. Lots of tears as well. Making grown men cry sometimes is interesting. Yeah, I'm sure you've <laughs> made men. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Max. And um... <laughs> You certainly deserve more of the floor and I know you could take it up, but I also know that you're um, like any true leader creating space for others to be heard. So 100%. thank you for that. Um, Elise, so great to have you with us on the call. Now, for those of you that are joining us today on this call, um, on the panel here, we have mainly facilitators, people that have learned to um, step into this craft as people to help people with this discovery. Um, but Elise is on the other side of the, the um i don't know what she's on the other side of actually but she's also here with us as someone who's gone through this experience taken on this journey re more recently as uh, to go through this discovery for herself so it's wonderful to have you on the panel Elise. i know that you have taken some big bold steps towards engaging with community as well and that's a big part of this step so i'd just love to hear from you what your message would be to the individuals on this call that are sat there thinking about taking on this work or not taking on this work, what would you say to anybody that's considering whether this is something they'd like to take on in their lives? Um, well, firstly, thank you for having me. I wasn't expecting to be on the, the, the panel, but I appreciate being given the space and hearing those stories is just um, brilliant. Um, the thing that I would say, the thing, <laughs> This work has taught me that everyone just needs to know it exists. You know, whether you choose to do it or not, whether you're in the time and place in your life where it's relevant, is that's environmental. The, the, the thing that I am driven to do, having gone through the work, is to just make sure that as many people that I can get my hands on know, know about it. Because for me, there is, I'm a really optimistic person, but there is nothing worse than feeling lost, right? There is, when you call it chaos, I totally agree, but that, that feeling of being small, being lost, being know that you can be more, um, to know that there's a route out of that, to know that there's an answer, to know that there's a process to work through, to, find solution focused answers um to me is really powerful um because yeah it's you know i came into it needing motivation and it's given me a level of accountability um but yeah more than anything it's just it's knowing that it's there amazing Lisa, thank you so much. That was beautiful. It was so great to hear from you. Thank you so much for coming out and sharing. Thank you so much for spreading uh, the word of this work. And, and like you say, that's, that's what we're here to do, to open the space, to create the, the possibilities for individuals that feel called and ready and inspired to take those steps forward, to have the chance to do it. And um, we're not here to, um, as you say, like enforce or impose but to create the space for those to uh, come through and, and do the work because it is big work this is not this is not light work anyone that's going to come into this work and as i say that i'm actually just going to jump out into another slide here so i don't know if you need to give me any sort of stuff there Dino, you should be all good to go my friend all good to go this is big work this is difficult work this is cha deeply challenging you don't come into profound understandings of yourself without going through the work. 
And a big part of the work is, is going back through our lives in, in a, a very in-depth way to, to mine for the diamonds, to mine for the gold and to understand what that's given us and to, to, to bring all the value out of that so that we can know what we have to take forward into our lives. And, and it's challenging work, um, but it's extraordinarily powerful work. It really is. So um, don't take it lightly is what I'd say, but you will be held and supported and guided through the whole process. And it's just an extraordinarily profound process to go through. So how are we helping people as we talk about this process? Well, um, we're very proud to say that we have created an extraordinary framework to help people to come into uh, understanding of these extremely profound discoveries and fundamentals. And all of that framework and all of that process is held within a state-of-the-art platform to make it as smooth and beautiful and enjoyable experience as possible as we go through and undertake this work. So I just wanted to briefly share with you what that framework looks a bit like. I'm, I'm only going to do this at a high level now. And in a moment, I'll share with you um, how to get a deeper understanding of everything we've discussed here today. But I just wanted to show you guys a bit about what the eight stages of that discovery process is, just at a high level. And feel free to take a, a screenshot of this. Um, I did, um, just to let you know, the, the um, sorry, dude, just to interrupt, but the it isn't showing at this point. So we just need to just press share screen again, mate, and then it should pop up. But you've got all the permissions you need. And we so are- what are we looking at, just me? We're just looking at you, it's all good. So why don't we, let's go back a step. There we go, that'll make more sense. Ah, okay, cool. <laughs> so um, like I say, it's held all within a, a state of the art, um, beautiful platform that you can you do all your bookings through, everything, everything's in there. But I just wanted to show you these eight stages. Dean, if you could mind spam my um, panel screen again, that'd be awesome. So it starts with an induction, and then we go through the life experience call, which is around uncovering the past. And then we go through what we call the values, diamonds, and reflection, which we can think of as rescuing that past. And then we go through a process of affirmation and ownership, which we can think of as consolidating that into the present. And then we go through a process of vision and validation, which is the process of aligning all that discovery into the future. Then we go through a process of mission validation, which is setting out what that journey looks like, how that game's how you're going to play that game now that the game's constructed. And then we go through a process of integration and goal setting. Now, this is one of the bits that's extraordinarily important. We are drowning in information and starving for wisdom, as E.O. Wilson said. And what that means to me is that we have so much information available to us and we have a lot of knowledge that we're taking on. We're reading lots of books, we're attending seminars, we're, we're listening, we're watching, we're listening to Jay Shea and all the fantastic people are out there sharing. And what's happening is we're amassing these big sort of conceptual things and just bringing up these concepts. But what's not happening is we're not bringing those concepts down into our bodies so that they can actually come into our lives so that we can live them out. That we can actually live them out in the embodied world. That's the step that's really missing, really missing, which is why people find themselves on these self-development pathways that sort of never end as kind of always the next book, the next thing is because translating something from a book into your life is, is a very different, difficult experience, which is why we believe that self-realization is the, the key, which is coming into contact with your own um, your own understandings through your own experience and then knowing how to integrate that experientially to live it out in your life so that it's actually powerful and effective in your life as opposed to just a nice concept or something that makes us feel comforted in a book or something that makes us feel inspired from a book actually something that lives out in our experience and, and we can see results from and feel results from and uh, step number seven is a big part of that, which is the integration and goal setting, which is the tangible first steps, which is the bringing into life the momentum of, of this powerful work. Um, and I'm just going to, Dino didn't get rid of my panel, so I'm just going to this down there. And then we go on to the review, um, which is after you go out into the field, if you will, if you go out into your lives to try on this discovery, it's kind of like, you know, trying on a suit. Maybe you're trying on something new or going out and test driving a new car. It's kind of a process of living into it and seeing how it feels. Then what we do is we take, give you three months to do that. 
three months to go and live it out, try it on, and then come back for a reconfirmation, a review of exactly how that is looking in your experience, how that looks in your life, and making sure that it's, that it's fitting, that it's working, that it's powerful, that it's actually effective and uh, embodied in your experience, in your, in your life. And the way that we support with community is with Toledo, which is a community of individuals that are all on the path of self-realization. Um, it's a community of individuals that are looking to inspire, collaborate together in, in new projects. We have uh, many, many calls from all of the experts around various different aspects of self-realization and a powerful community that's coming together of individuals that are taking themselves on, that are looking to inspire and empower themselves and one another so that we can collectively have a community that helps us to sail through the unknown to help us to rebuild the economy, to help us to rebuild our own economy, to make sure that we can build up our own wealth, our own experience, our own life, and do that in the synergy of people that we enjoy the company of and that we feel inspired to be around. So we have a framework, a pathway of self-realization and a community to help you to bring that self-realization to life and continue to deepen the work. Because understanding the discovery is the discovery, but it's living it out, which is the most powerful part. It's bringing it into life. And that's an ongoing process for all of us, including myself. So we have a community and an ongoing masterminds and experiences to help to deepen and continue to further that work as we step powerfully into making our ultimate contributions. The ultimate contributions we're all here to make, the unique piece of music that we're here to bring to the symphony of all things. So what we're going to offer you guys is a free consultation as a thank you for your uh, time invested in um, coming and listening to this. And we appreciate that it's a very deep and very broad conversation. And you probably have come away with more questions uh, maybe than you came to the call with. And, and that's perfect. And we're aware that that's going to be the case. So what we want to offer each and every one of you is the opportunity to have a free consultation. Now that consultation will be with somebody uh, that you see uh, on the screen. It'll be with um, either the expert that's brought you, sorry, I'm all over the place here. Either the expert that's brought you on, um, that you see on the panel, or myself, uh, Dino, or Megan. And that consultation is there to help you to un more deeply understand this work, more deeply understand what it can look like for you in your life, to see if it's the right timing, um, and to see if this work is what you, is called for you and to uh, take an extra step uh, down into an understanding uh, of this discovery and what it means. So we wanna provide you with an opportunity to have a free consultation. Um, what we're gonna do is ask everyone to raise their hand, which is why I've got a little picture of the hand on there. If you would like to take on an opportunity to have that free consultation, there's no obligation consultation, um, like Elise said, so beautifully what we're here to do is make sure that everybody understands the opportunity and understands what this work is as best as possible and we know that a one-to-one -one space for you to have your questions answered and for us to begin to paint a picture of what this could look like with you is uh, the most effective way to do that so dino if you could return my uh, screen or is it just behind it maybe? should just be able to, let me try that there we go is that better? um so if you would uh so if, if uh, is the, is the, oh, we got the raise hand function available on here? For the yeah, it is. There's already some people that are raising their hands, so that's wonderful. Brilliant. So Dean is going to make a note. So just make everyone um, that feels inspired to uh, take a step forward um, in the journey of this self-discovery, in the journey of coming into contact with their truth and who they are, so they can step forward powerfully in their lives authentically. If you want to raise your hand, um, then we'll make sure we've uh, got you noted down to have that free consultation. Um, and then we can move forward from there. Um, now we have run over by seven minutes. Um, I don't know if there's been any sort of Q and A's that have come in because I've been kind of focused on listening. Um, I'm just gonna have a little look now if any questions have come in that are burning, yeah, so, but it doesn't seem to be the case. No, so far we've just got um, participation, uh, participation through listening um, and hand raising. So I'm just taking a note everyone. Uh, of the, hand, the hands being raised. So thank you very much for that. So while Dino's taking a moment to um, capture all of your raised hands, because I know there's many and it'll take a, a little moment for him to get those all down. I just want to take a little moment to first of all, thank all of our panelists 
Um, it can be an intimidating experience to come and broadcast yourself to the whole globe. We're a global organization and we've got a global um, audience and to step into these spaces can be extremely intimidating and pushes us very far out of our comfort zones. And, and I just want to thank the experts that have come onto this call and Elise for coming onto this call, speaking so articulately from the heart, so passionately, transparently, vulnerably and beautifully. Um, you've done all of us proud. And secondly, I'd like to thank you at home for coming and joining us in this conversation, for taking the time out of your day to uh, be a part of this with us. Um, it's been a pleasure and an honor to be in your space and to share a little bit of what it's like to be in this community, to share a little bit of this community with you and the work that we're doing. It's a true privilege that I get to call this my work. This is uh, the result of me living into my vision and living into my values. And uh, I count my blessings every day. And I feel extremely grateful for the chaos that I've experienced that allowed me to find myself in this place where I get to hang out with extraordinary human beings like you and like the individuals that you see on this call today. And it's been an honor. And I hope that you'll join us in one way, shape or form again. And I very much encourage you to take the opportunity to have that free consultation I very much encourage you to deepen your understanding of this work and of yourself. It's very easy to think that we have to go out and get our lives. Like our lives are out there and we have to go and get them. We have to go and get them. It's not the case. Our lives are here. We have to come into them and step into ourselves. And then the picture of our experience changes and our life comes to us. Our life comes to us. It starts here, it's inside. It's coming into the profound truths of who we are and knowing how to bring that out into our present moment that then creates the picture of our lives from right where we are, the ever-changing sea becomes more fulfilling with more peace and more harmony, more beauty available to you, and more truth. So thank you again for being a part of this conversation and wherever you are in the world, I hope you have a beautiful day, evening, morning, night, and I look forward to seeing you on the next call. Lots of love, peace. Bye for now. Dino, I'm going to hand back over to you, my friend. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much, my friend. Really appreciate you taking us through that. And I really encourage everyone to just, uh, just a massive thank you to everyone for joining us on this evening or whatever time it is for you. And thank you to those who have put your hands up. There's more than half of you there um, that are taking advantage of having that additional conversation. And all it is is a space. It's just a safe space for you to ask as many questions as you like about the concepts that have been dropped here. Um, and to talk about what this may this work may look like for you, uh, and we're here just to uh, to give you that space. So um, I'd really take that opportunity for you, um, if it feels right. Um, and thank you very much, Al. Thank you to everyone on this call, um, both listening, also the panelists. Thank you guys for all your shares. Thank you to those who have made this call available now, to those that are here. Uh, thank you for doing that as well and sharing the power of this work. I hope this is all um, giving you something to chew on. We like talking about frivolous, light-hearted conversations. I hope you've enjoyed ours. <laughs> but no, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing how this all this conversation continues. Thanks again from all of us. Uh, take care, everyone. Uh, good luck for 2021, whichever way you decide to align yourself. All the best. Bye from all of us. <laughs>